Hey everybody, welcome to Planet Coaster College. Today I'll be taking a look at one of the weirdest coasters in the game, the Free Swing Coaster Pioneer, or as it's more known in real life, the Free Fly Coaster made by SNS. There's only one of these in the world, but it's a small family coaster which doesn't rely so much on speed and g-forces to be exciting, but really on these very strange cars that it has that make it seem as though you're flying around this albatross and uh, I know that sounds very weird, so let's take a look at this thing in game and show you how to build one. Now, as per usual, when we build the station, I want to raise it up a little bit, especially since I also want to go down after this station. And I'm going to actually change it to an exit and an entry on separate sides because that's a little bit more realistic. And I will keep the angle snap on actually for making this curve. Go to about 45 degrees, build that and remove it again uh, so that I can now turn off angle snap and keep it at the same perfect angle snapped curve angle while at the same time going down a little bit so that we can go into the lift hill. Uh, now that's all good and uh, we want to start going into the lift hill itself. I have a very small straight section where it hooks onto the chain and at that point I am not really sure how steep these lift hills should be exactly. I think somewhere between 25 and 30 degrees. There are somewhat gentle lift hills which I suspect has something to do with the ways that these cars are set up since they are very open um, and have barely anything uh, really holding you in it. It's definitely safe nonetheless, um, but you don't want to make these rides too uncomfortable. Uh, so in any case, just building a very, very gentle lift hill, something like that. I do want to make sure that I have my height markers on here and uh, go for about a height of 20 meters. There's only one of these in real life, so there isn't too much reference to go by. Uh, but from what they're saying on their website, um, what SNS is saying on the website, and from what the prototype is like, it is definitely a family coaster. And especially with the focus on that sensation of flying instead of the forces or the speed, you don't want to make these things too tall. Really keep them, um, well, doable for the children and the parents and everybody in the family, basically. So somewhere between 20 to 25 meters uh, should be very realistic. And I, I definitely think you can go higher than that and maybe do some very creative stuff with these coasters. As long as you don't make them too intense, I think they will still be a very realistic kind of fantasy ride. Anyway, something to keep in mind about the chain lift is that we do want to go down just a little bit with that chain, just to make sure that it's actually off the chain as it goes down. And there we are. Now next we're going into the actual track and I'll also be using this to show off what this coast is going to look like so I'll already start a quick test and also start building the first curve over here and I want to be very careful with these curves and try to make it as smooth as I can. Um, very gradual banking and very uh, gradual curve kind of going straight again I think should work. We'll see how it's going to work out. One thing that is really, really important about these things is to make it as smooth as you can. Um, I'll smooth this out before the car goes over it so that we can quickly have a look at what it's going to look like. So basically, no matter what the orientation of the track is, whether it's going through an inversion or whether it's just completely upside down, the carriages that you're sitting in should never invert. Uh, they do swing a little bit, which you can definitely notice, and that'll make sure that you are actually kind of swinging to the sides in all of the curves, which is uh, pretty neat. Um, but they don't actually go upside down, at least they don't in the prototype, and I definitely think that would make things way too out of hand and way too extreme, especially for uh, this being a family coaster. But basically, I think it's it's pretty good to go with this curve, it's maybe a little bit slow. I'm gonna speed that up a little bit, make it a tiny bit steeper, there we go. I can definitely make this first curve very small. Uh, this is all still inspired by the only prototype that's out there. Uh, but I would really say you can do just about anything you want with these things as long as you make sure that it's not too intense and remember that the appeal of these things is not actually in the track that they're riding or the layout that they have but really in the types of cars that these things have which is so unique. One thing which I will say though is that smoothing is the most important thing 
So as you can tell, that just looked like a very, very weird movement as um, the front of the carriage uh, was moving in a different direction because of the sudden banking than the back of it. And that causes all kinds of jerkiness. Uh, so no matter whether you're building a very small or very large version of these coasters, I would say that the smoothing is really what it comes down to and what is the most important thing to keep in mind. Um, because if the track isn't smooth, uh, then every little bump and every little sudden transition in the banking is just going to be intensified for the movements on those carriages. Uh, so that's the one thing you want to keep in mind. But that aside, a lot of these courses are just kind of helixing around. So I think that's something we can definitely do over here as well. Just head into another curve and see where it's going to take us. I have no idea. Um, the one in real life just kind of helixes around itself, which is of course a very uh, space efficient way to get around building these things. But I don't want to be too restrictive and say that that's the only thing you can do. That's just how these are realistically made. So I think some curve like this would be pretty fun. Um, now I think it's also time that we get into what these things do, which makes them a little bit more interesting than just the boring track. So what they will do in real life, or what the, the, what the existing one does in real life, is have these curves where during the curve it actually goes upside down. And I think that's an interesting thing to try. So basically we want to have a curve and just kind of gradually uh, start moving that track upside down. Don't worry too much about it not being smooth. Uh, we'll make sure to smooth that out quite a bit uh, once we've actually finished the curve. There we go. I can actually reduce the banking on some of those turns a little bit. Yeah, that that should just about do. Alright. Uh, now that curve is more or less done. I actually do want to turn on angle snap here to make sure that we're getting to 180 degrees. And... Now it's pretty much time to grab that entire curve. I normally would actually speak out against smoothing out like this, uh, but for a coaster like this where the smoothness of the banking is really the most important factor in making it a comfortable coaster to ride, I think a very easy shortcut is to just select everything at the same time and hit that smooth button many times until it's as smooth as you can get it. There we go. So here it's going. Also with the swinging of the cars, I would say um, it can definitely be fun to keep in mind the way that the track is banking uh, to kind of influence the way that the cars or the carriages are swinging. So for instance, this quick curve over here makes sure that they're swinging into this direction and then as soon as they're swinging back toward the center, follow it up with another curve going into the other direction so they can swing in that direction instead. Just kind of make use of that little swinging action that's going on. Now at this point, um, I think we're almost good to go with the brake run, but with how large this coast is probably going to get, I think we could also just uh, have one more curve and at that point go into a small mid-course brake run. These block brakes are very important if we want to run multiple trains on this coast in a realistic way. So I think it's about time to head back into a horizontal section again and add one more helix into this ride. So what I would actually like to do is since we kind of came from that direction in terms of the banking, kind of want to turn back into that direction again and see what we can do here. I think a long winding curve over here underneath the section of track where we've gone before is actually quite fitting and we'll have this go back up into what is going to be the mid-course brake run. It's kind of sitting besides the lift hill here. And not too sure about the exact speed which I'm supposed to be getting here. So I'll just have to test that for a second. But I think this should more or less do. That looks like an alright speed coming through that curve quite smoothly and into the block brakes. Alright, I'll take it. Now this block break pretty much marks the middle point for the coaster. And after this block break in the real life version, it just does a couple of very wide turns, very low to the ground, and after that goes back into the station. But I do want to insert a little bit more creativity in this because I would love if this was actually a more used coaster type because you barely see these things at all uh, being made in Planet Coaster or real life either. Um, but something which could be a lot of fun since there's only one of these in real life is that there's 
a lot of space to mess around with. There's a lot of stuff which hasn't been tried in real life with this kind of coaster, uh, which you can come up with in Planet Coaster. I'll show you an example in a little bit. But first, I want to get into a quick curve and just get a little bit of speed again and get a bit closer to the ground and make sure that the layout is not going to end up being too wide. And especially as we're coming to the ground, actually, I want to make sure that this curve is not too steep and that it's not too small, that we're not putting too many forces on people and mostly just swinging those carriages. So let's smooth out the entire thing. Just hit the smooth button quite a few times. I think something like that looks quite good. I do want to give extra care to the transitions though, since they're very important to get those things smooth. Let's check it out. That looks very nice. Now one thing which the real life version doesn't have, which I think could be very interesting for these kinds of coasters, is an inline twist, which is basically a 360 roll. And especially because it has those interesting carriages, I think this could be a very cool element to add to these kinds of coasters. I'll show in a second what I think makes them so interesting. Uh, so basically, we just want to have a bunch of track sections which all rotate to about 90 degrees. So here's the first one. Here's the second one, let's get that to 180, there we go. And then we get into the last one, and now the actual last one. Oh, looks like I was a little bit too close to the ground there. Hopefully I can still make it. Oh, nope. Alright, going to the side a little bit more solved that issue, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, and this is basically a very long-winded inline twist. The reason why I do think you want to make it long-winded is that the banking on these coasters is always very long-winded since it has such a huge impact on the carriages and on the way that you're sitting in this coaster that you want to make sure that the banking is all as smooth as and, and as continuous as you can. And as you can tell, it takes quite a bit of smoothing to make sure that a roll of a inline twist like this is actually as smooth as you can and it gets messed up when you select the entire thing at once. So really, this just takes a lot of trial and error and using a lot of smoothie smooth to make sure that it's as smooth as possible but if you do get it right you get that very interesting effect where the carriages revolve around the middle of the track which I think is very cool. There we go. With a little bit more smoothing it should now be a nice smooth transition and I think after that we can already head back into the station um, because I do want to end this thing with another block break section, making sure that we can fit another train on there, uh, but also to make sure that we can actually break down the coaster a little bit more, or break the speed a little bit before we head into the station. Uh, so I'm going to start at the end, as I usually like to do, make sure we have a bit of an incline going here, and at the block breaks and the regular breaks to make sure that the coaster slows down. Alright, now with that all taken care of, let's get into the very last curve. Now I do have quite a bit of speed left over here, and I want to be very careful and very smooth. So I'll just move out a little bit here, actually make that curve still go down, so that the very final curve can go up a little bit. And all I'm really making sure over here is that my final curve is as smooth as I can get it, and is very long winding curve since we still have quite a bit of speed left. Let's make that a little bit less steep and see how we can head back into the brake run at the end there. And especially toward the end of the curve where it's a little bit higher up, we should definitely be losing some speed so I can make the curve a little tighter here. And then toward the end, basically finish off the ride like that doesn't really matter that it looks absolutely terrible because the smoothing tool will take care of most of that. It will also take care of some of the banking here, so I want to make sure that I actually do keep the banking around here. And then finally, that transition is a very important area, so I'll smooth this out an extra bit. And I think we should now be more or less good to go. Let's see it coming. There we go. And into the last curve does swing a little bit better and with a nice speed into the brakes. Alright, that was basically the Planet Coaster College video about the Free Fly Coaster, also known as the Free Swing in Planet Coaster. I know this has been a bit of a weird video for this series and I was definitely doubting whether I should do it, uh, but I kind of uh, promised myself and the viewers, I guess in a way, that I would do all the coasters in the game 
and explain how they all work and this was on the list and it fits together with the SNS and Arrow courses that I've done in the past couple of episodes. Uh, so I figured I would just give it a try and make a short episode about it. I think the most important thing that I do want to say about these coasters, especially because it's just a prototype in real life and I'm not even sure if any more are going to be built at all, my most important message is just that this is a family coaster but you can mess with it as much as you want I think. There are some very creative ideas that you could come up with with this type of ride with having cars like this which no other coaster has. Um, actually, for some trivia, I believe the reason why SNS stated that these things are not being built anymore is simply because no company wants them, uh, no park is really asking for them, uh, since the existing one doesn't really have too great of um, a throughput in terms of the capacity that it has per hour, since uh, the availability of these rides are just 8 riders per train, I think they put out a new prototype uh, which hasn't been sold anywhere, which has 16 riders per train. Not too sure about that. Uh, but anyway, that one of the issues with these things is just that they're not that efficient. And it's, it's a very weird experimental kind of ride. It's not a very safe choice to go for with a park. So that's why I think these things are barely being built anywhere. But I personally think it's a really interesting coaster. It's definitely very unique. And it can, it can still provide a very interesting experience, I think, for being a family coaster, which ultimately doesn't really hit any high speeds, it doesn't really get any high g-forces, but it just has a very interesting premise and concept. Anyway, that was about enough coaster ranting for me today. I hope to be back with you for the next uh, much more serious Planet Coaster College with the multi-dimensional or four-dimensional coaster from SNS next week. So stay tuned for that and thank you all for watching.